Alright guys, Blaine Reshore with U.S. Fire Pump. This is Ryan the Rocky. Uh, you guys uh, you know, got to hear Ryan and Bob yesterday go over hydraulic studies, whether it's from a pressurized source or from drafting. This is that particular scenario. So if you guys have that static water source where you can pull from, uh, what we'll talk about here is a submersible system. What you're looking at here, we have two units. Each unit pumps 10,000 gallons a minute. The four subs that are in the water are 5,000 gallon a minute subs. You guys seen the sub up front. Uh, high volume, low pressure. Uh, so you just have straight thin flow. Uh, now yesterday when I was feeding the 6250 pumps, uh, fired both of these off, started sending water through the four lines. I had 10,000 gallons a minute going to each pump and their intake pressure on each one was 54. So a little bit of back pressure there uh, was helping boost my pressure up on this end, which in turn helped those guys out. Uh, so you guys will see that scenario today. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, four twelves going to the to the two units, and you're looking at 300 foot runs right here. So from these these two subs and these two, that is a, a 300 foot run to each one of the units. That's our comfortable distance. We don't have but about you know, a six foot lift here, uh, so we're not gonna have any friction loss. When I fire things off, you guys, you guys are gonna see, I'm gonna fill this whole system up all the way through the monitors. Everything is open, uh, we'll bleed all the air off. I will completely fill the whole system up with the submersibles. We'll have water coming out the guns, and then he'll go ahead and fire off. Uh, on the units themselves, uh, we have two 5,000s. Each one has its own booster reel. On the reels, each reel holds 150 feet of line. So this unit actually can be 150, way, 150 feet away from that static water source. We can go up to 200 feet. Uh, after 200, we start getting a loss with our hydraulic system. Uh, the pressure line that you see feeding these, it's uh, just under 4,000 PSI going through the system. Uh, you have a pressure and you have a return, and it's 57 gallons a minute, 58 gallons, gallons a minute that is, is pumping hydraulic all through the system. This pump is sending it through the direct foam injection skid right there, and then I'm sending that to the tsunami. So that, that's the way this is going. And the other pump is on these two are going to that trailer pump and they're feeding the super pumper down there. All right, and that'll be an 8,000 gun. So you're going to see 16,000 when we get up and running just from this pump. Well, eight from this one and eight from that one. That's our goal. Um, because we've got a cooler up there that we, we borrow about 20 gallons a minute from the pressure side of the pump. And we run it over here, we take the hot water through this cooler for this gearbox and run it back into the suction. Just like your trucks, we cool the fuel, the pump, the transmission, and the engine. Typically on a, on a super pumper that you see next steps down here, we borrow about 80 gallons a minute. We give it back to you, just a little bit warmer. But if we don't do that, we, these engines won't survive the heat load because of the horsepower and the load that we're putting on them. So it, it's essential that we have that. This is a custom, a custom built pump. We sat down with Shell Norco and with the committee there, we wanted to find out what their needs were, um, where they were gonna utilize this pump. Was it gonna be at the river all the time? And we found out that every location that we were gonna utilize this pump at, um, like he has several ponds, but we really, really had no good access. So then we brought into the play of a hydraulic sub pump. As long as we can get 20 pounds in here, I'm good. Typically we run about 250, 300 feet between those two to give us you know, a, a, a way to get from the water source, have this up on hard ground or something like that. We designed that manifold. That manifold, we can make anything in the world you know, as far as inlets on this thing. Uh, you can see we have, there's two sixes, one on each side. There's two twelves. And then there's also two sixes out the back. 
So we can actually put four sixes and two twelves on this pump in order to achieve the 10,000 plus on positive pressure. Um, it's 18 inches in diameter. And the reason we did that is we're trying to slow the velocity down of this water coming in here. Um, just like anything else, you know, when you start to squeeze something down, the velocity gets faster. Well, if, if we put a 16 on there or a 14 inch, would have been okay as far as water flow, but I'm trying to slow that down. Again, it's 62.50. On positive draft here, you're gonna see 8,000, only because, as like I said, you're limited to the uh, what's coming to you. We have the DFI here, it's the uh, direct foam injection. It's going to be a 300 GPM single point system. <clears throat> Looking on this side of it, we're going to have two intakes here. So we could actually put two stingers and connect them to two boats, or if you have a tanker, you can connect up one or two tankers and, and actually uh, draft the foam off that. It's going to be the intakes coming here into the system. <clears throat> This is, what, this is where the uh, foam would come through the uh, foam pump. Come over, either we're going to inject it into the waterway or we're going to discharge it out where it's going to be a foam only discharge. Or if you wanted to load it back onto a big truck or something that, uh, like that, or a tanker pumper, you could do that. As we come around, you'll see where we have the direct inject going into the waterway. This is going to be a 12 inch waterway here. Look a little further here, you're going to see this is an adjustable water flow meter that's in the system, that's where we're getting our reading off the water. It's going there. <clears throat> also, this is the uh, semen foam flow meter we have over here that you're looking at. So that's where we're going to get a reading for the foam to know exactly how much foam to put in. Now, to operate the system, we would get it connected up the waterway. We would actually stab our totes and normally operate one tote into the other, power the system up, foam system will come up, it'll go through a self-diagnostic, it'll say FRC, it goes back to zero. Then in standby mode right now, we we'll crank the motor, come up, when the motor comes up, we will hit run, and what it does, it's gonna go up to around 15, 1600 RPM. Once we get there, right now, then we'd be in standby waiting on water to come through. Water starts coming through, we get a reading, or I could even turn the foam system on before that. Just by pushing the button, I turned the foam system on. Water starts coming through, we get a reading off the water. The light under on here will start flashing. I'm injecting foam. Just that simple. 